This car does not have working AC right now. I have this temperature sensor in there and you can see it's reading almost over 100 degrees and that's about the temperature it is outside right now. The AC is completely on, both of them are as cold as they can go and it is not doing well. It's actually blowing out air that's hotter because it's going through the system of the car and actually warming it up. So this needs some work. We're going to go ahead and hook up the gauge. Make sure these are closed, but not too tight. Just with two fingers, tighten them up. And the same thing on the connectors. The high and low connectors are completely different sizes, so there's no way you can mix them up. With everything closed up, we can go ahead and hook up the high side here and the low side up here. We're gonna open up the system just by turning the high on and turning on the low. Open up the gauges. With both of these open, there is no activity at all because this system is completely drained. To power off, we're going to pull a vacuum on the entire system. This is an air-operated vacuum pump, meaning you hook compressed air up to the side and you get vacuum, or you could use an electric vacuum pump. With everything completely open, our gauges and our connectors, we can go ahead and turn on the air. This is exactly what we want to see. We want to see where it was at zero and now it's going into inches of mercury. So it's about 20 inches of mercury right now. After running this for a little bit, so we have all the air out of the air conditioning system, we're going to go ahead and shut these valves off here at the gauges. Disconnect the air. We'll give it some time now and just see if that needle moves. We want to make sure it stays in that same position. The needle has not gone down at all, so we know there's not a leak in the system. So we can disconnect it from the vacuum pump here. Just make sure these two valves are closed off. Just in case there's any future leaks, we're going to add some of this universal dye. It makes it a lot easier to find leaks if there are any. Now, you want to be careful, you don't want to pour this over the engine bay, because if you were to spill any of it, it would make diagnosing the problem a lot harder, so we only need a little bit in here. We want to make sure that we wipe off everything that we can, we don't want the chance of spilling this anywhere. When you thread on your piercing valve, make sure that the metal spike is retracted all the way so you don't accidentally pierce it before you don't want to. And thread on the yellow line. With these valves still closed off here on top, we're going to go ahead and thread this down and pierce into the can. Now that that's fully seated, whenever we bring this back up, that'll allow it to flow through this tube. When you're working with high pressure gases like this, it's important to have a nice pair of safety glasses. Bring the valve back up, and that's releasing pressure into these lines. With the manifold gauge away from the engine bay, we can bleed this line here without having to worry about the dye that we just added just flying all over the engine bay. Now that all the air has bled out and we probably blew out a bunch of dye, we can go ahead and start filling the system. Go ahead and start the car. Now with the car on, we're gonna turn the AC on so we can kick the compressor in. Now we can remove our piece of tape. Now open up your low pressure line. And now we'll turn on the high. When you turn the can upside down, you can really see it flowing in. You can just set the can down on a cool part of the engine. Now that we've got the dye in the system, if there's ever a leak, it's gonna be a lot easier to detect it. I mean, you can just see how bright this stuff is. I got a little bit off my finger here, and as soon as I shine over that, it just pops out. It's really amazing what it does. So you would just look around the engine bay at all of your lines here and see if you see any of this Whenever dye. we bled the system, some of that dye came out and you can see it shining all over the uh, cabinets here. So this is why we did it away from the engine bay and didn't want to get this in the engine It's bay. best to look for these leaks at night whenever there's no stray light and it's easier to see whenever that UV dye really reflects. You can see some dye here where it must have dripped, maybe we brushed up against it, but that's what you're looking for. And then on the Schrader valves here, inside there's some dye, a little bit harder to see, but it's kind of sprayed around there, which isn't a bad thing because that's where we just put it into. So you're just looking along the lines here, everywhere where the AC system runs, looking for leaks. So that's how you put dye in an air conditioning system, and it makes it a lot easier to find the small leaks. So hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.